Our story of Dodge's Bighorn Tractor must begin with the founding of the Dodge Automobile Company and the sale to Chrysler and Chrysler's exit from the heavy truck business. Psst. You can buy a 64 scale model of a Dodge Bighorn Tractor with the link in the description below. I'll talk more about it a little later on in the video. And please take a moment to subscribe and join my YouTube family to learn all about the best diecast models you need in your collection. The story of Dodge's beginning began when Horace and John Dodge founded the Dodge Brothers Company in Detroit, Michigan in 1900. And they quickly found work manufacturing precision engine and chassis components for the city's growing number of automobile firms. Chief among these customers were the established Olds Motor Company and the new Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford selected the Dodge Brothers to supply a wide range of components for his original Model A, the 1903 to 1904 version. That included the complete chassis. Thus, Ford needed to add only the body and the wheels to finish the cars. Henry offered the Dodge Brothers a 10% share in his new company in return for $10,000 worth of goods. That became one of the best deals Henry ever offered to any company. The first machine shop where the Dodge Brothers worked as parts suppliers for Olds and Ford was located at the Boydell Building on Bobian Street at Lafayette. This location was replaced by a larger facility at Hastings Street and Monroe Avenue. By 1910, the Dodge main factory was built in Hamtrak, where it remained until 1979. The Dodge Brothers Motor Company was established in 1913, and by 1914, John and Horace designed and debuted their first car, the four-cylinder Dodge Model 3035 Touring Car. With the investment in the Dodge Brothers Company by Henry Ford, the Dodge Motor Company flourished until the Dodge Brothers' death. With the loss of both founders, the Dodge Brothers Company passed into the hands of the brothers' widows. The Dodge Brothers Company was then sold by the widows in 1925 to the well-known investment group Dillon, Reed & Company, for U.S. $146 million. Dodge Brothers sales had already dropped to seventh place in the industry by 1927. And Dylan Reed began looking for someone to take over the company. Eventually, Dodge was sold to the new Chrysler Corporation in 1928. On January 2nd, 1929, Chrysler and Dodge Brothers were building Chrysler trucks, retaining the Dodge name. After this brief history of the Dodge Company and its sale to Chrysler, let's fast forward to today's subject, the Dodge Bighorn Tractor. Dodge was experiencing declining sales and increased competition in the heavy truck market from Peterbilt and Kenworth during the 1970s. This eventually forced Chrysler to drop its medium and heavy duty models, including the Bighorn line of heavy duty trucks. A total of 261 Dodge Bighorn trucks were produced between late 1972 and May of 1975 when Dodge ceased production of these trucks. Short lived makes these trucks rare and highly sought after by collectors. Based on registry numbers, there are approximately 105 to 110 trucks remaining of the 261 produced. <laughs> Much like model trucks and pretty much everything else, supply and demand increases the price of the Bighorn substantially. Several of the Bighorns that have survived are too far gone to make restoration possible. The remaining trucks are either restored or sitting in barns, slowly rotting away, waiting for someone to rescue them.
This is the Neo Scale Models 1973 Dodge CNT 950 Bighorn truck with sleeper. It's a resin cab on a die cast frame with a big resin sleeper. It comes in their hardboard sleeve with a black plastic display base and a plastic display case lid. Also in the back it has that little mirror piece so that you can see it. These trucks are just screwed down with two screws inside so they're easy to take off the base plate. Now these display cases are nice because they keep our models from getting all dirty. And I'm just going to take this off so we can look under the hood and see this model up close. The other thing I'm going to do is going to go on and unscrew it. It just has two screws underneath so they're very easy to take off of the model. And then we'll take this other screw out. When you do this, make sure you put your thumb under the frame, or the thumb under the base plate, and your forefinger on the frame to hold the two in place. And it'll just use a medium, small to medium sized Phillips head, and be very careful because you can round those out, and you also can break your model if you don't hold it properly when trying to take it off the base plate. Take the base plate out, and then let's bring the model up closer so we can really see it. Here we go. The Dodge Bighorn is a relatively rare real truck, the CNT 950s. They only made a very small handful of them before they gave up. It rides on aluminum 10 hole wheels, front and rear. These aren't the best rendition. However, keep in mind, guys, this was one of their very, very first releases that they ever did in 64 scale. So it's not necessarily such a bad thing they were still learning it has a nice tread pattern tire on them and then it's got the fuel tanks with a step in it again could have probably been a little better but first runs it has the dodge and the little grill there those are photo etched parts it has air tanks and battery box right there it has uh, resin mirrors resin door handles resin exhaust resin roof lights and resin air horns those are actually pretty sturdy in this size because of how small they are and they're just fine. And they painted them silver, which makes them actually look more like the real models than do these all this chrome plated, electro plated stuff that we're getting on the other ones. Although we do kind of like our flash a little better. This is a gold with a red pinstripe and then a red stripe on the cab and sleeper. It also has the red frame. Now I know why are they got this paint job. It was on a Dodge promo, but I'm not sure the real ones were ever sold this color and most people ordered more common colors. And again, this probably would have been a much more popular model had it been in a red or a blue or a black than in this gold. So they're still around even though they're kind of old. But if, you love, if you're a Dodge fan, you really need one because they're one of the coolest, rarest Dodges that ever were. Pulling around towards the front, you see that big Dodge lettering in photo etched. And then there is the Ram hood ornament. The Bighorn was actually the introduction of the Ram for Dodge, which is kind of cool. It has the box style turn signals on each fender and single round big headlights. The big round uh, incandescent sealed beams with sealed beam pattern molded on. Really, really nice headlights. They're individual jewels pieces. Has a nice straight bumper with a Montana license plate on it. Really nice. The grill is photo etched. So are the letters on Dodge. Turning them up a little bit, you can see. One of the things that was really goofy about this truck, this great big tall hood, wide, long with a little short cab. It looked like the cab was actually chopped, but that was the factory cab. It was that short up there. It has five roof lights that are bullet style with uh, painted silver with a little orange on the front to make it look like they have uh, lenses. Two air horns, the round type, painted silver, and then up on the sleeper, got five more roof lights. Bullet styles, silver on the back, and amber lenses. You can also see the brackets that mount the exhaust up there. They have 45 degree miters on the exhaust. Pretty nice. 
It has that really nice Dodge Ram's head big horn hood ornament right there up on the hood. The windows are all vacuum formed windows, and then they got a little thin ring of black tampoed around them, so it looks like it's got gaskets, and it has two photo etched windshield wipers. Pretty easy to knock them off, so be careful with them. Turning around to the passenger side, door handle, fuel tank. Fuel tank's actually a little different because there's a toolbox there and it has a shorter fuel tank on this side. Battery box, air tanks, wheels, tires, but this really nice uh, toolbox hanging there. You also got a toolbox door into the sleeper and a door into the sleeper. Stripes carried around. Sleeper just has two screws on it, so you could probably take that sleeper off and have you a really nice day cab. And I bet you this truck would look better as a day cab than this big fancy sleeper, but uh, at the moment we won't know. So that's the way it looks. Now we turn them around a little further to the back, and you can see the Alaska license plate between the frames. It has individual jewel style um, brake lights right there, one on each side of that license plate. Not really sure why there's a license plate, but there is. It's got mud flaps back here and brackets. They're all black. These are resin pieces. Now, the fifth wheel, being one of the earliest releases from Neo, you gotta, it is a resin fifth wheel. It pivots, but you gotta, um, and you can see it has warped just a little bitty bit because it's pressed in there too much. But you gotta hone out that kingpin hole just a teeny tiny bit in order to hook up to DCP and first gear trailers. I think what they did was they made it for that and they didn't account for the actual fact that resin shrinks just a little teeny tiny bit. So they really won't hook up very easy, but with just a little teeny tiny honing it out, you're good to go. Now we'll go underneath here. And you can see that beautiful red frame. It is a die cast frame while the truck and the tr sleepers are um, resin. Now they'd be pretty easy to take off. See, it's just got two little Phillips screws that hold that sleeper on. That's it. Maybe another drop or two of glue on there, but I don't think so. It says 1973-164 scale Dodge C&T 950 on the frame. And then the other side says Neo scale models. Rear suspension is here. Not quite sure what these, it has air brake canisters on the back axle, but not on the front axle. That's kind of odd. Uh, transmission from detail, engine detail, no steering, straight axle. And sometimes these have free rolling wheels and sometimes they kind of freeze up a little bit. But since we're not really using these models as toys, that's okay if it actually freezes up. If you ask me, that's kind of better because it'll make sure your toy never rolls off your shelf. And then it's got the tie rod on there, spring front suspension, spring rear suspension, drive shafts, the whole nine yards. Really nice. And you can also see that that one great big tank on the driver's side and a smaller tank over there. Not quite sure why they did that, but I'm sure it has to do with the model that they found to actually go out and photograph and take dimensions of. That's the way it looked. Now we'll turn them up to the top and you can see those roof lights. It does not have a window into the sleeper. The sleeper is solid, but it does have a little black to make it look like it has that skylight window going into the sleeper. You can also see what looks sort of like the bellows, which would be between the sleeper and the cab. Doesn't quite touch the cab, but that's okay. That just means it'd be very easy to take this cab, the sleeper off, and not disturb the cab. I also noticed the cab is gold all the way across the back, so it'd be great. You could easily have this thing off. The stacks are right behind the doors, and it would look great as a day cab. Ooh, wouldn't that be sharp? Day cab with a grain trailer behind it sitting on your farm. It has black quarter fenders right here. And they are resin parts, just like the rear mud flaps. And then let's set it down. And now, it didn't come with a trailer, but I want to show it off with a trailer because you really need to see what these trucks look like with a trailer. So I'm going to go on and show this guy off with a vintage livestock trailer from the 70s. It is made by uh, Top Shelf Replicas. Let me get it, and let's hook her up. That way you can really see what it would look like. 
this would have been common, this truck hauling a grain trailer. Or this truck hauling a livestock trailer. You'd also probably see this guy hauling plenty of other uh, trailers out there back in the day. But because there weren't too daggone many of them, they probably, you wouldn't see many on the roads very often. Even into the 80s, these guys were pretty much gone and replaced. But anyway, that is Neo Scale Models 1973 Dodge CNT 950 Bighorn tractor with sleeper. It is a resin cab on a die cast frame pulling a Top Shelf Replicas Wilson vintage 40 foot livestock trailer. It's a shame that Dodge bowed out of the heavy truck market so soon after releasing the Bighorn. I think the truck would have been a hit had Dodge been given time to develop the truck. Especially had that short hood Bighorn truck made it into production. Don't forget that while supplies last, get your very own Dodge Bighorn model in 164 scale with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back in the warehouse soon with another episode of Coin Talk.